Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about taking on work. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, should one always strive to take on the most challenging work in the team to expand one's skills and impact? Well, I would say that that depends on where you are. So, something that is sort of important, I believe, is if we make an analogy to a sports team, if you are really, really good at a, at a team sport, it's sort of something you learn fairly early on that you have these sort of star players who are really really good but if that star player is gets used to sort of playing at the level where the others can't keep up the team becomes weaker as a unit because you know the the opposing teams will of course know now after a little while oh you have this this superstar player here well we'll just try to adjust our tactics so that you can't leverage that person as much as you want to and if the rest of the team is sort of learn has sort of learned to depend on that person it gets the, the team is going to lose because you can't pass the ball or the puck or whatever you're doing right to that person like you usually do when uh, and because well they're on to you. you they know that this is what you want to do so now you as the rest of the team are going to have to sort of find a way to play in a way where you have to leverage your strengths right and the same sort of phenomenon is happening in software development where if you have a person who is very very good it's sort of dangerous to get used to that person doing everything that is difficult it will create what we call a domain expert now being a domain expert is a good thing because it basically means that you understand how things within the company works or in the code or something like that you can answer questions which is a good thing all of these things are good but what's very dangerous is if that person becomes a liability it, they become a, a inform like a black hole of knowledge where the only person in the team who knows how to do things that are difficult is that individual because that basically means that without that person the team crumbles and so the healthy thing here is for you to try to figure out what types of work can you take on that challenges you at an individual level but without creating a situation where you make the the work that you do in the team about you and not the team. Let me expand that a little bit as well. So when you go in and you pick up say the hardest story on the board, are you doing that to impress somebody else? Or and are you, or are you doing it because you feel like this is something where you feel like you would benefit personally from this or is it like what what is the motivation here? What are, what are you trying to do? Because if you have let's say this idea that you're going to impress somebody or maybe you have this idea that you're going to try to make the work of the team about your personal ambitions well then you're creating this sort of situation where the team really just exists for you and you're really not trying to help the team you're trying to help yourself or trying to improve your standing or something like that which is a very selfish behavior which is in a way it's sort of like false outrage or you know these sorts of people who uh, who there are people in the world who truly suffer and are victimized by certain things and but then there are these sorts of people who pretend to be the same sort of thing, to gain something else, if that makes sense. So if you're trying to help the team, but you're not doing it, you're, or you're picking up things for the team, but you're not doing it to help the team, you're doing it for yourself. Because either you're trying to get ahead, or you're trying to avoid doing difficult work, which is the like the opposite of this, where like people who are really weak usually do this sort of thing. Uh, this is damaging to the team, even if you might get some appreciation for it. So what I like to, to recommend to people is to, to try to think more about what is the best ratio between doing something, uh, doing something for yourself and do and having the right 
person for the job at any given moment. So let me expand that as well. Uh, if there is a very difficult challenge, just ask yourself, who is the most reasonable person to take on this specific task? Like, who is going to benefit the most? And this is where a good team lead is usually useful, or like a mature team, where you might have something that is very, very difficult, there, where like if you pick it up, it's actually very likely that there's not going to be a much be much benefit from it, and you're maybe you're like the most experienced person, and as I said, then you're going to damage the team because you take on all these hard, difficult tasks. When instead, it might be more useful for you to take someone who is not as experienced and let them take on something more this this specific um, story, so that they can learn and expand and they can grow. It's all about balancing the team. Not to have someone who's way, way, way too uh, too important to the team versus anybody else. To like some people are always going to be better than others, but to have it at a, like a healthy level, so the whole, so that you balance the the knowledge of the people within the team, and so. If you can figure that out within the team, then you sort of learn very organically that yeah, this is a challenging type of type of story, but actually it is something that will grow me as a person. Like my uh, my skills will be improved. It will have impact. And at the same time, there's not really a good reason why somebody else should do it. Okay, cool. Then this is a say. This is a good thing because now I'm going to help the team and I'm going to benefit from it. When as long as you have that sort of personal honesty. And you're looking out for, not just for yourself, but also for your coworkers, and you all are all doing that as a team. That is a recipe for an extremely effective team that works really well and continues growing because you're sort of trying to figure out the different types of tasks you have based on your current skills and you, the time that because you know people spend different amounts of time in teams and so forth. At this moment. Who is most appropriate to pick up this job? Not because they are the best at it necessarily, but all things considered, all things, uh, both like how good they are versus, you know, how much will they benefit from learning from this challenge? Try to figure out who's going to pick it up based on that, so that you don't have one super developer and everybody else is sort of worthless, uh, and you strengthen the team, if that makes sense, versus just one person. Act as a group rather than an individual, uh, that sort of thing. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, you should always try to stri you should always try to find something in the backlog that is a good challenge for you something that is worth for like that has this symbiotic relationship the this is what i believe this is a, one of the reasons why i think like capitalism or like i'm not going to go into that but at a conceptual level like a, a very broad stroke to philosophical level symbiotic relationships are s the best uh, for us usually most uh, most people I think agree to that where if there's a benefit for me personally to do something for you and vice versa then our relationship will be really really good so in this scenario if there is a specific story in the board that is a little bit more tricky and you're gonna learn from it and it, this is gonna benefit the team at the same time then go for it and this is a very like, it's a win-win situation but don't do, make this into something like, you know, because you're a part of a team, right? Don't make everything about you. Try to look from the bigger perspective. In some cases, it might be that you see that, well, you know what? I can probably pick this up, but it's better that this person picks it up because they're going to grow as a person or maybe they're like, haven't really done this before. And then you can help them and like sort of guide them and so forth and so forth. Um, and so, so, so try to be a team player versus having this idea that it's all about you improving your impact and you improving your skills. And I think that that is going to give you a good balance. Uh, and overall, it's going to make you a better. Well, it's going to one part. It's going to make you a better uh, team player, and it's also going to prepare you for management. Uh, I can promise you that much. Have a great day.